In July 2016, a young ghost hunter died in mysterious circumstances after visiting a supposedly haunted property. Authorities hastily ruled it a suicide, but this was not a satisfactory answer for many people, including those closest to him, who are still trying to understand the strange death of Gaurav Tuari. India, a jewel in the crown of the Asian landmass. Occupying its very own tectonic plate, it is a country so large, it is often referred to as a subcontinent. Rich in culture, history and resources, India should be one of the world's foremost superpowers. But sadly, this is not the case, for she has rarely ever had chance to shine. No stranger to plight, bloodshed and plunder. She was suffocated for centuries under the might of imperial dominance, and much of what made her both unique and beautiful was either stolen, suppressed or amalgamated by the colonial powers that govern there, but not anymore. With her independence came boundless and unrealized potential, and with a population of well over a billion and one of the fastest growing economies on the planet, India is finally coming of age, and fulfilling her destiny of becoming one of the most powerful nations on the face of the earth, culturally, economically, and militarily. Of all the places in the world, India was a country bedtime stories had yet to visit, but that changes here and now, for she is rich in other ways besides all those other things. Perhaps unknown to many in the Western world, is the fact that India is home to some of the most shocking, haunting and bizarre tales of the paranormal and supernatural on record. We intend to return here many more times for future episodes, and whilst the story that follows is certainly shocking, haunting and bizarre, it is also tragic. It involves a ghost hunter named Gaurav Tuari, who, after visiting a supposedly haunted property, died under mysterious circumstances the very next day. It was a death authorities were at a complete loss to explain, and is a case they are still struggling to understand, even now, as the years roll by. One thing that is certain, is that this young man died well before his time. Gaurav was born in 1984 to Hindu parents. From a young age, he expressed an interest in films and told his mother and father that he wished to be an actor. After leaving school, he auditioned and was successful in landing a few minor roles in TV adverts and shows. At the age of 18, he felt like he was finally beginning to realize his dream as he was cast in a number of films, notably December 16 and later Tango Charlie. Again, these were only bit parts, but they were feature length cinema releases and Gaurav was sure he would go on to achieve bigger and better things. But alas this was not to be the case, and as work dried up, he began to consider other career choices. Another of his passions, besides acting, was aircraft. He loved the thought of flying, and so at the age of 21, he moved to the United States in order to train as a pilot. Whilst there, he moved into an apartment in Florida with some friends, and little did he know it at the time, this would be the start of a turning point in his life, 
one which would apparently lead him down a long and winding road to his eventual demise. Shortly after moving in, a number of strange things started to occur at the residence, from things being moved around the apartment to hearing disembodied voices, doors opening and closing on their own, and even a few sightings of ghostly apparitions. Gorav, who had always been skeptical about the paranormal, found these occurrences fascinating rather than frightening. He viewed them scientifically rather than spiritually, and resolved to find a rational explanation for what was going on. He never did, of course, but from that day forward, a fire had been lit within his soul and he developed a burning desire to understand the mysteries surrounding the paranormal and supernatural. Gorav graduated from the MVP Aero Academy in Texas, but this was not to be the only accolade he would add to his resume during his time in America. He was also certified a lead anomalous investigator by the US Paranexus Association, and so began his career in working in the field of the unexplained. Upon his return to India in 2009, he established the Indian Paranormal Society, which he used to help families and households suffering life-affecting paranormal phenomenon. Surprisingly, there was no shortage of work. At its peak, the society was receiving over 250 emails and 500 telephone calls per day, and Gaurav had to hire extra staff in order to cope with the demand. As fate would have it, he would find himself returning to his first love, television, although not in the capacity he had originally intended. Such a high volume of work inevitably invited media attention, and Gaurav was approached by various networks asking him to appear in their TV shows regarding the paranormal. He agreed and made his return to the small screen in the perhaps inappropriately titled MTV Girls' Night Out. Although this sounds more like a program which chronicles the adventures of women during alcohol fueled nights out on the town, it was in fact a serious reality TV show about ghostly events, involving eyewitnesses and filming on location where sightings apparently took place. He then went on to appear in Bhutaya as a paranormal expert and lead investigator, describing the many different types of activity and his reasoning behind them. It was 2014 that would be the year he rose to international prominence in the paranormal field. Working with a multinational team of experts from the US, UK and Australia, Gaurav would lend his expertise in helping to create the series Haunting Australia and took part in all of the investigations. He was fearless during filming, and would often volunteer to do solo stints in various parts of whichever location they were investigating. For example, in episode 3, he willingly climbed inside the morgue chiller in an abandoned mental asylum, and was left alone for well over an hour. Throughout the series, he captured many intriguing images of ghosts and humanoid apparitions on his camera equipment, which impressed his peers. It had been intended for the Haunting series to run on for further seasons in different parts of the world, but with the closure and subsequent replacement of its parent network, it was unfortunately cancelled, and Gaurav returned to work at the Indian Paranormal Society, which he was more than happy to do. On the 6th of July 2016, he attended a property in West Delhi's Junakpuri neighbourhood, which had apparently displaced a family who had suffered at the hands of an extremely violent and malevolent entity haunting their home. He and his team cleansed the household and left at around 2am. Upon returning home, Gaurav got into a blazing row with his wife, Arya. They had only been married for five months, but recently, Things had been difficult between them, as she was getting more than a little annoyed by his constant escapades, leaving in the middle of the night and not returning until the early hours of the morning. She wanted her husband to settle into a steady day job, where they could begin to think about starting a family. This was, of course, not what Gaurav wanted to hear, considering the amount of work he had put into his project, and that night, he slept in a separate room. 
The next day, on the 7th of July, 31-year-old Gaurav Tuari would mysteriously lose his life. He was up at 10 a.m. reading emails and checking messages, and he and his wife had managed to resolve their differences of the night before. Shortly afterwards, he went to have a shower and get himself ready for the day ahead. At around 11 a.m., Aria, who was sitting in the living room with her father-in-law, heard a loud thud in the bathroom upstairs. At first, she thought nothing of it, but after a few minutes, went to investigate just in case. The bathroom door was locked from the inside, but there were none of the usual sounds of a tap running or a shower splashing off skin. Instead, it was eerily quiet. Aria knocked on the door and called out to her husband, but there was no reply. She soon summoned Gaurav's father, who was able to force the door open, and upon entering the bathroom, they found Gaurav lying on his back, eyes bulging, sweating profusely, and gasping for air. He was rushed to the hospital, where he died shortly afterwards. Sadly, doctors were unable to resuscitate him. Medical professionals at the hospital noted that he had a thin, dark line of bruising all around his neck something that his family members had not noticed when they found him. The cause of death was determined to be asphyxiation, but despite this, a few of Gaurav's colleagues quickly took to social media to falsely report that he had suffered a heart attack. Authorities, on the other hand, were convinced that Tawari had hung himself and delivered this version of events to the press. Foul play was not suspected, as there was no other way into the bathroom besides the door which had been locked, and both Aria and Gaurav's father would have noticed someone entering the property from the ground floor, as it was largely open plan. However, there were a number of problems with this conclusion. Firstly, no noose of any kind, makeshift or otherwise, was found in the bathroom. If he had hung himself, what had he used? Secondly, Gaurav was said to be very happy. He had shown no signs of depression in the weeks and months leading up to his death, nor had he expressed any suicidal thoughts. He was newly married, had a nice home, and was earning decent money from his work. So why would he take his own life? Of course, the reasons for suicide are deep and varied, and just because someone experiences successes in life does not mean that they do not struggle with other demons, but surely this sort of thing would manifest in their day-to-day -day demeanor. Gaurav's father, on the other hand, is convinced that his son died at the hands of something unexplained. He related to police how Gaurav had told him, I am feeling extremely uncomfortable for quite some time. I am being followed. I am being watched by someone who refuses to leave me. Gaurav's father also stated that in the weeks leading up to his son's death, he had seen an apparition in the household on many occasions, always no more than five feet away from the young ghost hunter, as if it was somehow attached to him. Finally, in a twist that might be seen as somewhat prophetic, Gaurav had previously mentioned such marks like the one found around his neck when sitting down to dinner with his family saying that they are injuries inflicted by vengeful spirits. So are we to believe that Gaurav was killed by something paranormal? Or was it something altogether more rational? Perhaps a death by natural causes, which experts are yet to fully understand. After all, medical professionals have provided little in the way of answers, besides the fact that he died of asphyxiation. They have not determined how or why that asphyxiation occurred. Police, on the other hand, are adamant that this was a suicide, even though nothing about the scene of the incident or aspects of Gaurav's life seem to point in this direction. But this is the only explanation that they have, and the only explanation that they can realistically give. We may never fully understand what happened to Gaurav Tuari. What we do know is that he is sorely missed by friends, family, and his colleagues who worked closely with him. In their eyes, 
he was one of the best. A fearless young man who approached every assignment with a critical eye and a scientific frame of mind. In many ways, he did not believe in the paranormal. He theorized that the majority of hauntings were manifested by those who experienced them. In other ways, he did believe, and maybe that is what eventually took its toll on this young man's mind. Gaurav visited and investigated over 6,000 haunted locations in his short life, and he helped countless people and families along the way. He was a tenacious individual who gave everything to the pursuit of knowledge and understanding. We can only hope that one day, someone is able to finish the work he started. <laughs>